Hello and welcome to this Estranti video. Now this is a highlights video. So this is something a bit different from what we normally do, but I don't know if you're about to sit your ACCA strategic business leader exam. If you are, you may be getting a little bit nervous. You may be thinking, I don't know how best to spend my time before the exam. Well, luckily for you, you're in exactly the right place. This video is perfect for you because you're gonna gain a really strong understanding of the pre-scene. Now, I mentioned it's a highlights video, and that's because it's gonna be showing you the highlights from three videos, well, in fact, it's actually from a series of five videos that we here at Estranti have prepared for you on this forthcoming pre-scene. Now, the videos themselves, uh, as I've mentioned, are a series of five. The first three are a line-by-line -line analysis of the pre-scene, drawing out all the most important bits of information and explaining any areas that you may be a little bit uncertain by. So, let's take a first look at the highlight from the pre-scene analysis. Now, um, the first thing we see is that Bigo is a company that uh, operates in the country of Bielan. Now, bielan has got around 200 million people. So, we're looking at a country similar to the size of Brazil, really, it's got a population about 210 million. That should give you a sense of scale. Now, obviously, we'll get more information about Bieland later on. But, so Beagle uh, is a TNC operating in a, in a big country, and it was established 12 years ago. So it's a, a relatively mature company. It's had time to establish its brand. It's had time to refine its operations, and it's had time to understand the market dynamics in BLAT. And we can see that actually, it's grown to become the second largest TNC business in BLAT based on the revenue and the amount of customers that use its surface. So what we've got here is a kind of picture of a very successful company that's grown very successfully and has a significant market presence. So we can see here straight away in a very brief introduction that we've got a strong company we're, we're dealing with. But we can also see that second uh, very loud, very clearly. Let me just get that on screen here. The second largest TNC business in BLAN. So obviously, when we're talking about okay, what might the case focus on, or what might the questions in the exam focus on, well, obviously, what could it do to become the largest TNC business in BLAN? Um, so maybe we could learn from the leader's strategies. We don't know who the leader is yet. We could learn from their strategies, possibly. Or we could think about differentiating ourselves in order to grab the market share. Now, obviously, uh, this is just a very brief intro, but we can see already uh, what we're dealing with and possibilities of what we may be asked to do. So now we can move on to section two, where we have an overview of the industry as a whole. So we've already mentioned that uh, the TNC industry uh, is not what uh, we'd associate with their traditional tax cab hire business. So I don't know who of you who have been to London and used a traditional black cab or to New York and used one of their traditional yellow cabs. There you stand on the sidewalk or the pavement, depending on which city you're in, and you stick out your hand when you see one of the cabs going past. If it's got its lights on, it will stop for you. You tell it where to go and it will take you there. And then you'd be able to pay cash traditionally, but you can also now, I think, pay cards and a lot of these services. So that's our traditional kind of taxi cab business. Then you sometimes have like mini cab services in, in towns and cities too, where traditionally you would have phoned up uh, the local mini cab office and you would have booked a taxi to arrive at your location for a certain time to take you where you want to go. That had been pre-booked. Now what these TNC companies do is really driven by 
the smartphone. So you get your app on your phone. Certainly Uber is the most famous in the world, probably the largest in the world. On your app, you don't speak to anyone. Uh, the GPS software on your phone tells you where you are. It shows you in the app where you are. You say, can we picked up now or in an hour or whatever? And you then say where you want to go. It'll give you a price, say how long it will take to pick you up. And then it goes from there. So there's a big difference from how things are done traditionally, and it has been driven by smartphone technology. And this kind of on-demand service, this on-demand transportation service is what this TNC is that's referred to in the case. And you can see uh, for the pre-scene and the case study exam, this is what TNC businesses are. And I will go into these in more detail uh, on pages three and four as well. Now, one thing that's really important that we have to pick out from this first bit of information is individual drivers of cars work as independent contractors for TNCs and TNCs do not maintain their own fleet of vehicles or imply drivers directly. So what you're seeing here really is independent contractors with their own vehicles. Now firstly, because they don't have their own fleet of vehicles, it means that as a TNC company expands into different areas, it's not having to spend all its money buying lots of brand new vehicles, uh, which obviously would cost huge amounts of money. And also the fact that the drivers are independent contractors rather than employees obviously has huge implications for labor relations, legal obligations and cost structures in the business. And what we've seen in the real world is this kind of model of kind of low costing assets and independent contractors has mean companies like Uber have been able to spread throughout the, the world very quickly. Now, again, if you think about this kind of traditional black cab taxi service in London, uh, taxi drivers would have to spend years uh, sitting for the knowledge where they would be tested about how well they knew London and making sure that they knew all parts of London in their mind. They didn't have to rely on a map. Certainly there was no GPS software then. They'd also have to buy in to their black cab as well. So it's a really expensive business. And obviously if you're a mini cab firm, you also have to pay for the cabs as well that people drove. Now the TNC companies do away with all of that. Really what they are is the technology which connects the driver to the client. OK, uh, but of course, with this kind of tech uh, comes other kind of complications, like making sure that, you know, drivers that you don't employ come up to your own standards and lots of regulatory issues as well. Something to do with kind of employee uh, classification that we will come to uh, later on in this video. So there we go. That's the overview. That's the beginning of what the business does and kind of two really key points to bear in mind. Now let's go and have a look down at uh, the country of operation. Now in B-Land, uh, we've already mentioned it's got a population of about 200 million and 80% of that 200 million live and work in urban areas. Now, public transport system is under pressure because of this rapidly growing urban population. That means that there's too many people using it and it's not reliable. And so you can see the point I put on screen is that this is an environment where TNCs can thrive. And so if we think about our company we're dealing with, Biago, I think I'm going to call it Biago from now on, Biago. Um, it's going to have a really large and concentrated customer base in cities where their target customers don't have many reliable alternative options. Um, and so these TNC companies can be a way to uh, for people to be able to use and get to where they have to go reliably and hopefully cheaply. Now, 
uh, you can see the bit I've just highlighted that because of this, because the transport system in BLAN is under pressure, actually the government is really supportive of innovative ways to address the challenges that are being faced in the cities across the BLAN. Now that's really good news for companies like Biago because it means that governments are likely to kind of create a favorable regulatory environment because they think, okay, well, our transport system is under pressure. It's going to probably cost a lot of money to fix the transport systems. We know transport systems are very expensive and they seem to have to in, in the cities all across, their com uh, all across the country. Obviously, you don't particularly want people, everyone, having and using their own cars because that's going to cause more problems on the roads and also you've got environmental problems like everyone uh, using gas and petrol and then all the pollution that's causing. So, okay, they might think, well, actually, this is a really good system. This is kind of a, a happy medium, a happy compromise. We don't have to invest in the transport system as much. People don't use their cars as much. You know, we'll let the, the market take care of it and see what these TNCs do. And of course, that means that hopefully the regulatory environment, or hopefully for the terms of Biago, is going to be really uh, favourable for them to be able to expand and expand and expand. Okay, um, that is BLAND. Now we can drop down to our next section, which is BLAND market. And we can see our first... So I think a couple of things that we can think about here or we'll learn from here is that Biago uh, can be seen as competition for public transport. So it's got to start to think about how it can differentiate itself from public transport. Maybe it can focus on its convenience. Maybe it can say, well, we're really reliable and the transport system isn't, or perhaps we're uh, affordable. Uh, because that is part of this competition. Secondly, we can also see there's rising popularity for it. Uh, growth of TNCs in urban areas shows there's a growing market, but that also is going to mean rising competition. So Biaga also needs to focus on thinking about how it's going to maintain and even increase its market share by understanding its customers, um, having to continually invest in technology, and maybe think about other avenues in which it could expand to. And, and the final thing is that the regulation, although I've said the government is, is likely to create a favorable regulatory environment, of course, that doesn't mean that Biago simply doesn't have to think about regulations anymore. It's got to be really uh, aware that regulations or government policy or shifts in public opinion can change really quickly. And so Biaga has to make sure that it's agile and can adapt to any changes, making sure that it complies where necessary. OK, so that is a bit about BLAND. Everything's looking okay so far, isn't it, for Biago? Really promising environment. And obviously, it's one of the largest companies in this sector too. But let's think about the B-Land market now. Now, Zenbi is the main competitor for Biago, and it's kind of the original TNC in B-Land too. So it's the, the largest TNC in B-Land. And it's also the second in the world globally, and that operates in 50 countries. Now, because of this, Zenbi likely has the advantage of economies of scale. It's going to have more data insights because it operates in more markets. It's been operating for a longer time. And possibly it's got more advanced technology because it's operating in these different markets. But what does that mean for Biago? Well, Biago is slightly more uh, modern, I suppose, at the time. It's two years uh, younger than Zenbi, but has 
obtained a significant proportion of the market share that Zimbi originally had. Now, Biago does only operate in B-Land, and it does, though, operate in 250 cities all across the country. And we can also see that kind of a little bit of our regulations here that the cities are the ones who set the criteria for the operating licenses for TNCs and their drivers. Now, if we're saying that Zenbi has all these advantages and has been for operating uh, for a longer time than Biago, then Biago has done very well too get a significant proportion of Zenby's market share, which we'll come on to in a moment, in a moment, sorry. So really we can start to think about, well, what have they done really well so far? Well, they may be better because they only operate in B-Land. So they may have a better understanding of local market dynamics, or perhaps they uh, offer a better customer service, or perhaps they've used a really aggressive marketing strategy that has chipped away at Zembu. We don't know yet, but these are questions we can start to think about and ask and think about, well, what has Zembu done really well? Because although there is a leader in the in the country, that doesn't mean, well, that, that Biago isn't doing well. And we can see in the next paragraph that several uh, TNT businesses have been attracted to B-Land in the last decade but their, their offering is quite limited. And it's really the Zenbi and Biago. They hold 85% of the TNC market in B-Land. And of course, this is really good for both as company because that means that any new entrants that want to enter B-Land or any of these kind of smaller players really face significant barriers to growth because they have so much of the market already. Um, and customers registered with TNTs in B-Land have doubled in the last year. We've already talked about the growth of the market in B-Land. And by the end of 20X3, a quarter of the population were active users of TNC services. Now, the fact we've seen a doubling in the use of services and a quarter of the population use already really is a healthy sign for these companies. It suggests there's opportunities for growth because more and more people that live in these urban areas, we know it's a really urban country, is B-Land. Um, and as the transportation network's under pressure, more and more users uh, are probably gonna start using TNT. So it's good news for B-Land. Now, one thing I do wanna draw our attention to, just before we move on, um, is the fact that the city sets its own criteria. Now, of course, that can have been one of the reasons why Biago, uh, with its one country kind of focus, is so good, because it's, it's able to focus on the needs of these different cities. And again, that is a barrier for entry for anyone else trying to come in. But although that's a positive, negatively, it works in 250 cities across the country. So Biago has got to be balancing the regulatory needs across these 250 cities and things might be changing. So that is something to be aware of as we move through this case study too. So there we go. That was the pre-scene analysis. Three videos really getting to the detail of the pre-scene. But there's two more videos in this series. And the first of those is the strategic analysis video. Now, one of the key elements of this ACCA SBL exam is that you are able to use uh, key models, key theories, key tools when analyzing your company. Now, that can be a really hard thing to do when you've just learned about the company, when you've just found out who they are. So here at Astranti, we've done the hard work for you, and that's what you're gonna find in this clip from our strategic analysis video. And there we go. So we've got a lot to cover in today's video, so we best get going with something that we touched upon 
in the pre-scene and that is the mission so obviously we saw the mission the pre-scene that's showing what the organization is all about and what the purposes of it are and when i'm talking about purpose we're looking at why does the organization exist who does it exist for and what are the aims long term then we're going to think about the strategy so in this context we're thinking about how does the organization compete and kind of what services it offering in i know we've already touched upon that in the case section already and the values so the quality value for money innovation basically what the organization is standing for and the policies so the policies are the things that are put in place by an organization to make sure the members of the organizations act in a way that aligns with the values and the strategy and the purpose, making sure everyone works together and the policies are the way that is kind of fixed. So let's have a think about the purpose of Biago. Because basically it exists to provide communities in Beeland with accessible, affordable and sustainable transport solutions. And we know from the pre-scene that the company was founded to address the kind of the pressures and the growing needs for the urban transportation in Beeland, which have really densely populated cities. But we also know the transport systems are under pressure, overcrowded, and they're not reliable. And so what the founders did, they worked in other tech companies, but they were also commuting in uh, Beeland cities. And so they saw this as a kind of solution to the problem they were seeing for themselves firsthand. So the Biago's purpose is to create a world where transport and tech connect seamlessly and they connect people, they connect business and they connect communities. And the aim is to offer a better alternative to private car ownership, as well as the kind of more traditional taxi services. And we saw all of this uh, in uh, the mission and values section of the precinct. But what about the strategy? Now we're going to talk about strategy a lot in this video. And I think what comes across from the various sections of the pre-scene is that Biago is focusing on competing in the TNC industry and it's doing that by offering a range of services. So we saw ride hailing, ride sharing, the little scooter on micro mobility, and it might have been it might have been scooter, I think I call it, keep on calling it scooter, especially I think it's bicycles, and uh, business transportation services. And a company competes in these areas by leveraging kind of cutting edge tech to make sure the services they provide are efficient, are cost effective, and are user friendly. They've got the user at the center of their services. And Biago differentiates itself by maintaining really high safety standards. And it's always trying to innovate its offerings like we saw with the acquisition of the micro mobility company and expand its infrastructure as we see as it goes through all the cities, expand to all the cities in Beeland to meet the growing demand. Okay, let's drop down now to values. Now, we see the values explicitly stated in the pre-scene, kind of in the committed to safety section, the committed to the environment section, uh, as well as some extracts from the website too. And what we can extrapolate from that is that Biago stands for safety, innovation, and environmental responsibility. And the company prioritizes the safety of its customers and drivers by implementing really stringent safety protocols with drivers, the drivers are safe, so the consumers are safe, and trying to promote this use of environmentally friendly transportation options like the ride sharing, which it was initially set up to do, and the promotion of trying to use electric vehicles by its drivers. Now, Biago's ethical code of conduct also ensures that the company operates to the highest standards. And we see that in its commitment to professionalism and sustainability and community well-being. Okay, so that's values. Let's drop down now to policies. 
Now, basically, these policies at Biago are designed to make sure that all the operations, all the employees and the way the employees act are aligned with the goals and the values of Biago itself. So what we saw in the pre-scene is there's mandatory safety training for drivers. There's rigorous checks on the drivers to make sure they've not got criminal records and also data privacy measures, as well as kind of incentivizing drivers to uh, lease or purchase EVs as well to try and reduce the impact of Biago on the environment. Now, what we see with the governance structure is also that its actions consistently reflect its mission and values. So we're seeing a really strong brand, pardon me, a brand reputation as well as operational integrity. So there we go. That is our first section. Just kind of a recap, really, of what we see, of what we saw, sorry, in the precinct. But now let's go over to kind of our first model, which is the balanced scorecard. And I'm sure you're all familiar with a balanced scorecard. It's basically a, a model or a framework so that an organization can take its vision and strategy and kind of frame it with a set of performance measures and hopefully get kind of a holistic view that goes beyond just looking at kind of the financial metrics was traditionally what was analyzed. So let's apply the framework. And obviously we've got our four factors here. And the first one is the financial perspective. So the KPIs I've got in the balance scorecard are the profit margins and revenue growth. And the reason I've gone for profit margins and revenue growth, well, firstly, profit margins, is that it's really important for Biago to maintain healthy profit margins in order for them to remain competitive as well as kind of invest in new technologies and services. We saw how much of the staff at Biago were dedicated to research and development and this kind of uh, innovation. Now, by using profit margin, obviously it's a very simple uh, KPI. It helps assess the efficiency of the cost management and operational effectiveness. And I think the importance of financial sustainability is kind of implicit throughout the pre-scene, especially with regards to competition uh, and the kind of the strict competition or the tough competition, as well as what I've already said, this kind of need to invest in this new tech and obviously this continual growth, so this new infrastructure. And the second one I talked about, is, well, the second one I've got on screen is the revenue growth. Now, this is really important because what it does is it reflects the company's ability to expand its market share and generate income across its core services. And this is especially true when you're talking about such a highly competitive industry as we get the TNC industry in B-Land. Now, what we saw in the pre-scene was that the ride hailing, almost called it ride sharing, the ride hailing is the primary revenue driver and that generates 72% of its revenue. So I think some of the things that we're gonna be talking about throughout this video are gonna be, okay, how can we diverse away from, diversify, pardon me, away from being so reliant on kind of one element of such a competitive industry? How can we make sure there's revenue growth across lots of different areas? And also uh, just to move as well into areas that aren't quite so competitive or away from this competitiveness. Um, so there we go. That's our first element, financial perspective. The second factor is the learning and growth perspective. And the first one I've got in here is employee and driver development. And that's because I think we stress this quite a lot in the pre-scene is that it's really important that employees and drivers develop in order to, the, pardon me, the Biago will be able to adapt to the changes in the industry and any disruption coming, as well as making sure high service standards are maintained. And this KPI would track the investment in the training 
and development programs. Now, obviously, one factor here is the drivers, but I don't think we want to negate the fact we've got 5,000 people working for us. And what this KPI especially does would make sure that this really important areas like research and develop, that our employees are being primed for development. And we saw in the case study the importance of staff development in research, design and tech, because these are the key areas to sustaining growth and innovation. And the second factor I've got in here, or the second KPI I've got in the learning perspective, is innovation and technology investment. And this is really important because obviously Biago wants to maintain its competitive edge in the TNC industry. And this KPI would track the company's efforts to develop new features or just make improvements to the services they currently offer as well as explore these emerging techs like EVs and autonomous vehicles. We mentioned in the pre-scene when we saw kind of the latest developments in uh, the industry as a whole, it wasn't focused on Biago, that just autonomous cars would be an absolute game changer for the industry. So obviously things like that are important, but it just shows how uh, tech is such an important fact in this industry. We, we focused a lot on the, the user centric nature of the business and a lot of that stems from the ease of using the tech and the GPS systems and the payment. It all comes from that. We don't just suddenly want to stop investing that, we want to keep on pushing. Okay, the next one is the internal business process uh, perspective. And the first one I've got is operational efficiency. Uh, and a kind of an idea or an example of the operational efficiency could be the ride completion time. Because obviously if you're trying to make an efficient operation, what you wanna try and do is minimize these ride completion times. Because A, uh, it means your drivers can move on to another job, whether that's picking up food or more people or, just making sure that your customers are happy. They've got door to door in the most efficient way possible. Remember, if they are ride hailing, they've chosen this, the more expensive option compared to ride sharing, because they're looking at the convenience of being picked up on their own terms, taken where they've got to go, and they want to go there as quickly as possible. They don't want to be tracking the driver on the app, going around all the roundabouts four times and turning left when they should be turning right, etc., etc. That's a bit hyperbolic, but you know what I mean. Um, and basically this KPI would monitor how effectively uh, the operation connects drivers with customers and then completes the rides. And we saw many times throughout the pre scene how important efficient operations are, how important efficient technology is in making sure reliable services are delivered, especially when we have talked about things like GPS software and mapping and routing. Okay, and the other KPI I've got in this balance scorecard is safety measures. So this is really, don't we talked a lot about customer and driver safety in the pre-scene? And that's because obviously, but from ethically, you want people to be safe, but safety or the Biago ensuring the safety of both drivers and customers is really important for maintaining trust and building this really strong brand reputation. What this KPI would do is manage the effectiveness of the safety protocols, such as the driver background checks or the standards of the vehicles, making sure they're not too old or broken. And again, we've already said how much uh, the commitment to safety was written about in the pre-scene. And then we've got our final perspective which is customer uh, perspective. And the KPIs I've got here, the first one is market share. So basically this would just reflect the competitive position of Biago within the TNC industry in B-Land. And of course, that will be really important for tracking uh, Biago's ability to be able to gain the customers and then retain them in this really competitive uh, crowded market and obviously we saw in the pre-scene that Biaga and Zenbi hold 85% of the TNC market in B-Lands so, so that makes making market share a really important metric uh, for the strategic success of Biago. 
And then the final KPI is one, I think, that was in the pre-scene. I think it's one that they suggested for the generic industry as well as the KPI we looked at actually for Biago uh, towards the end of the pre-scene. And that's the NPS, the Net Promoter Score. So this is really tracking customer satisfaction, making sure that Biago is meeting the needs of its customer. And obviously the higher the NPS score suggests you've got customer loyalty and that you're going to grow organically because people talk about you and they might delete Zembi Zap and put your app on the phone instead. Uh, we, we'll come on to the fact how, what an in, how easy the industry is for customers just to move between different substitutes and different providers. Uh, and of course, that's really important. If everyone's really happy, then it's more likely we're going to be growing the customer, break, the customer base, pardon me, and also retaining the uh, customers that we already have. Um, and I think um, the NPS score is beginning to drop. As our rides increased, our score was dropping. So that's definitely something we need to consider throughout this video is, okay, we're going to make sure our customers are happy, but we've also got to grow. And how are we going to manage that? So there we go, that is the balance scorecard. There were the few KPIs um, identified for each sector that I think are really important to track if the company wants to achieve its strategic goals. And I tried to select KPIs based on the alignment with Biago's mission to provide the sustainable, accessible and affordable transport, but also growth, customer satisfaction, operational efficiency in this kind of continuous innovation. So there we go. That was our strategic analysis video, but we have one more. And this is one of our most popular videos. This is our top 10 video issues. So in this top 10 video, we identify what we think using our expertise and our experience, what we think are the most likely issues to appear in the exam based on our analysis of the case study. And then what we do in this video is we highlight to you the issues relevance. Then we kind of come up with some ideas of how the, uh, the examiners may test that information, what forms the questions may take, and then we show you which bits of the case study we would look to to answer those questions most effectively. Take a look. So let's zoom in and number 10's issue is the competitive pressure in the TNC industry. And that's something that we certainly talked about a lot in the pre-scene. We talked about the kind of industry it is we talked about obviously the main competitor and the and the smaller competitors that were also in the market too. But let's have a look a little bit more about the relevance for the TNC. Now, I've already mentioned the major player is Zenbi, and obviously Zenbi is a bigger organization than Biago, operates in more countries. And so to have a major player like Zembi in the market directly affects Biago. It directly affects Biago's pricing because obviously it can't charge a lot more than Zembi because otherwise people just wouldn't use Biago. It affects our service offerings because we have to kind of offer similar services to try and claw that market share from them like we have been doing over the last few years. And also it affects the overall market share. And also this kind of competitive pressure in this environment, something we talked about, for example, in the last video, was a new player entering the market with new tech. And this kind of environment, this kind of competitive pressure, that kind of possibility forces companies like Biago to have to continuously innovate, to stay ahead of the game and to remain viable. And if we think about the last video, uh, when we looked at Porter's five forces, we saw in that strategic tool that there was a really high industry rival. We, we identified that in that tool. And so we can see the intensity of competition significantly influences Biago's strategic decisions, significantly influences their market positioning. And that's why we think it's a likely uh, issue to come up an exam just because it has such an importance for Biago. 
Okay, now what kind of scenarios might stem from that issue? And again, these are likely scenarios. It doesn't have to be specifically these scenarios. So firstly, we've got a possible price war. So ZenB, for example, may think, well, okay, we wanna get back some of the market share that we've been losing over the last few years. We are a bigger organization. We benefit from economies of scale. We've got bigger data sets to make smart decisions from. We might price really aggressively in order to try and drive other competitors out of the market, including us. And obviously that would lead to a price war and that could squeeze our margins. Or perhaps uh, another one that we've kind of mentioned already, we mentioned in the uh, strategic analysis video, is that a new competitor, or in fact an existing competitor, launches a new service. That's really the, the new thing here, the new service. And so that pulls, people, that pulls Biago's customers away from then onto this competitor. And so what Biago would have to do is form a swift response, thinking, okay, are we gonna match this service launch or are we gonna enhance our own, serv our own service to try and pull these customers back? What would be our best approach to deal with this competitor launching a new service? And then the final likely scenario I've got here is basically just a consideration of a strategic alliance or perhaps a different acquisition in order that the Biago strengthens its market position to create the synergies, which is enhances its competitive advantage in this really competitive environment. We've seen it make acquisitions already, haven't we, with its mobile scooter, mobile bicycle, I always call it scooters, mobile bicycle uh, range. So there we go, there's some likely scenarios. So if this topic comes up and these kind of scenarios come up, what's the kind of things that you should be addressing? And that's what we're going to be looking at and the key points to raise. Well, firstly, we would be thinking, um, well, if we think about the ACCA syllabus, we would firstly be thinking about strategic positioning. Uh, understanding the competitive environment, using the tools that we've looked at already in the previous video, like Porter's Five Forces, like SWOT analysis. And this ties into analyzing the strategic position of an organization and understanding its competitive environment. And then also an ACCA syllabus topic would be the kind of performance measurement. So looking at the impact of competitive pressure on performance metrics like market share, profitability and growth and just really being able and prepared to analyze these metrics in the context of competition and competitive competitive dynamics pardon me and then slightly more uh, specific key points to raise is discussing the importance of Biago not following that cost leadership strategy that we talked about in Porter's generic forces but instead um, differentiating, getting, you're offering a unique proposal, a unique proposition to get that competitive edge, which is what we learned from our SWOT analysis and like I've said, the generic strategies already. Also, uh, be prepared to evaluate the potential impact of price wars on Biago's profitability. And again, that stems from the five forces we looked at. And also to, you know, be able to analyze uh, the benefits of acquisitions or partnerships, looking at the, the problems you might associate with that, like cultural alignment, for example. So there we go. That is our first topic done. This is the kind of structure that we're going to follow throughout this video. Hopefully this all makes sense. Let's drop down now and see our next topic, which we just got in screen, which is regulatory compliance and legal challenges. I think uh, this is a topic that really stood out of our um, to story, a topic that stood out in the pre-scene. And that's because we know how regulated the TNC industry is you know, possible changes to driver classification or perhaps data privacy and transportation safety. These are issues that came up time and time and again. We obviously want to comply with regulatory compliance 
so we avoid any huge legal penalties or perhaps suffer really bad brand damage or just have operational disruptions, you know, from not being able to operate in a city. Obviously, we'd lose a lot of our market. Now, we highlighted these kind of issues in the Pestel analysis when we looked at the legal factors and also it came up in our SWOT analysis too when we looked at the threats from regulatory risks. So these issues can materially impact Biago's operations and cost structure, which is why we think it's a possible topic uh, to be examined in the exam. So let's have a look at some likely scenarios now. And again, these are kind of things that we've mentioned throughout the pre-scene. So firstly, obviously a big one is the fact that regulations may come into being where drivers would be classified as employees rather than the independent contractors. And we know, don't we, from our pre-scene, from ex our exam, that's going to really impact Biago's labour costs, and it's also going to make it a much more complex operation. One of the reasons it was able to grow, or these companies can grow so quickly, is that obviously they run background checks and have to advertise for drivers and stuff, but it's not all the complexity of having employees. Basically, you've got willing drivers that, that come up to certain regulatory standards and they can work for you with a GPS in their pocket. So obviously that would really increase the complexity of operations. Another scenario may be where stricter data privacy laws are introduced, like we've seen with GDPR being introduced into Europe. They could also be, or it could also be implemented into BLAND. Now, that may mean the Biago has to invest in enhanced data protection measures, or perhaps they may face a, a penalty for non compliance. And another one that came up a lot. Um, in terms of regulation changes or certain lots of mentions of it in the pre-scene were the challenges that TNC organisations have about getting these operating licences in new markets. So in BLAND, obviously, they need one for each city they work with. They uh, Each local authority has the power to deny or grant these licences. Now, obviously, that is a snow in itself, like what happened if it, that changed, but also we're going to come on to an issue later on about expansion. Well, obviously, when we expand, regulatory issues could be a really big problem there. There might have totally different sets of laws into the country in which we're looking to expand into or the region we're looking to expand into. OK, so let's have a look now at some key points to raise. And the first couple of elements are you know, subjects and topics from the ACCA syllabus. So first, we've got governance, risk and ethics. So all the issues we're talking about here directly relate to corporate governance, regulatory compliance and risk management. And obviously, these are key components of the ACCA syllabus. So it's really important to understand the implications of legal challenges and the importance of maintaining ethical standards. And a second element from the ACCA syllabus is corporate and business law. So having knowledge of regulatory environments, legal frameworks and compliance requirements is really important, especially to understand how legal issues do impact business strategy. And then a couple more specific elements here, uh, emphasizing the importance of proactive regulatory compliance is something we talked about a lot because if we're operating to those standards already, if regulations do come in, and that could help us avoid any potential operational disruptions as well as the financial penalties as we picked out in our PESTEL analysis. Also discussing the potential uh, strategies for lobbying or legal advice or adapting business models to meet any new regulatory requirements uh, as they come into being. Something again we picked out from Porter's Five Forces and also evaluating the cost implications of complying with the new regulations or the current regulations and looking at the need for robust legal and compliance frameworks as well as the importance of staying ahead of regulatory changes. So there we go, that's our number two or our number nine, if, you, if you're counting down with us that way. 
So let's move on to our next issue now, which is technological advancements and innovation. Well, obviously, we saw time and time again in the pre-scene how central technology is to Biaga's operations. It really drives the customer experience using that technology, you know, making sure that the car can come to wherever the passenger's location is, making them feel safe using in-app uh, buttons, them being able to follow on GPS, the drivers being able to get there quickly in the most efficient route because they've got technology. All this tech puts the customers at the heart of Biago's experience and also drives operational efficiency. And so, of course, it's vital. It's already something we've mentioned in this video. It's vital that we stay ahead in technological advancements in order that we maintain our competitive edge and meet the evolving needs of our customers. And as we've already talked about, other companies are also evolving all the time. So we need to make sure we're matching this or surpassing it so our customers don't go elsewhere. There we go, put that on screen for you. Now, obviously, we've said the reason I'm including this is because we talked about it a lot in the pre-scene and it's what we picked out in our Pestel and the technological factors and our SWOT analysis. We said one of our strengths is in our technological capabilities and obviously we want that to remain a strength. We don't want to stop investing and researching because we don't want that to become a weakness because if we can't compete in efficiency and putting the customer at the heart of operations, then we're gonna lose our market share. It really is a key determinant of success in the TNC industry. So what kind of likely scenarios may, may pardon me, we pull out from this situation? Well, firstly, it might be uh, implementing new tech, so we might need to invest in AI optimization, optimization pardon me, for routes. So that would improve our service efficiency and reduce costs. And of course, that would mean that we're staying ahead of our competitors, who, as I say, are always adopting similar innovations. Or perhaps it might be a scenario, this is one we talked a lot about in the pre-scene, where we have the ability to adopt autonomous vehicles. Now, obviously, that would mean we invest significantly in this new tech to try and do it, as well as the new infrastructure, but there'd also be lots of different regulatory approval processes to go through too, um, as well as all the ethical considerations about probably getting rid of all our independent contractors. And the third one is, uh, the third likely scenario here is the fact of just upgrading our platform in order to maybe increase the safety features we offer to our customers, like real-time ride monitoring, or perhaps enhance data encryption to meet the new emerging standards in the TNC industry, as well as the evolving and emerging demands of our customers. Okay, let's have a look now about the key points to raise here. We'll start off with a couple of ACC elements first. And firstly, kind of strategic position. So here we'd be looking really at the role of technology in shaping an organization strategic position and its ability to innovate, and that's included in this area of the uh, SBL syllabus. Now, this area also includes analyzing how technological advancements can be a source of competitive advancement. And the second element is the information technology. So just understanding the role of IT and business strategy, including the implementation of new tech and the risks associated with technological change that would be really relevant to this issue and more specifically just basically highlighting the need for continuous innovation to maintain the competitive advantage which we talked about when we looked at porter's generic strategies when we said okay one way we can differentiate is through innovation and constant innovation i mean we do have you know our biggest department in our organization in terms of employee staff is research and development. Uh, and also discuss the potential benefits and challenges of adopting new tech. That's gonna be the cost of it, how complex it is to integrate, as well as any potential regulatory hurdles. And we looked at something like that in Porter's Five Forces when we looked at the impact of tech advancements on an industry rival. And also to consider the risks of technological disruption if Biago's competitors adopt superior technologies first and how important it is for us to make timely adoption and the scaling of new tech. I mean, one thing we brought up here was kind of how disruptive it would be if another organization 
adopted uh, in, you know in Beeland adopted autonomous vehicles before we did and be like a game changer uh, so that's that's kind of a really uh, I suppose the extreme example of of what could happen there okay let's move down now to our next issue which is number seven and that is again another topic we've talked about a lot which is customer and driver satisfaction okay so the relevance for uh, choosing this topic is that both customer and driver satisfaction are vital for Biago success because they directly affect service quality, brand loyalty, and operational reliability, reliability pardon me. That's something we talked a lot about in all these videos. Now, we also have talked about the fact that if there is high satisfaction from the customers, it means they're most likely or more likely to have repeat business with you. If your drivers are happy, it's more likely they're going to have stay with you, which means you're going to have more stable driver network, operational efficiency, and all these things, pardon me, lead to sustained growth. So that's the reasons we've selected this, but also that we noticed satisfaction was dropping uh, over or as rides increases. So it kind of gives us scope there to be issues so that might continue in our likely scenarios. So drivers may become unsatisfied. They might not think they're being, they might think that uh, Biago is taking too much of a commission. They're not getting enough job security, not, not happy with how they work. They might be moving over to other firms who may lure them away from you. That could lead to driver shortages for Biago. And of course, if there's not enough drivers kind of immediately ready to pick people up in urban environments, it's kind of service disruption. People can just flick onto the other app on their phone and select a driver that way. Um, on the flip side of that, you might get customer dissatisfaction. Maybe you've got service quality issues. Maybe we're too expensive. Maybe we're too slow. That means we've got increased churn, more negative reviews, our reputation is damaged, our market share falls. So let's move over to the key points to raise here. And firstly, we've got the leadership and management um, from the SBL syllabus. So the importance really here of stakeholder management, making sure there's driver, customer satisfaction. Obviously, that ties into leadership and management practice, how they're led, how they're managed. And also maybe talks about motivation or organisational culture and customer relationship management. And maybe a focus on the fact that we also have alluded to the fact about control for independent contractors versus if they were employees. How do we make sure they remain to a certain level even though they are not employees? And the second element of the SBL syllabus I want to talk about is performance measurements. So basically how... Uh, how do we evaluate performance through customer satisfaction metrics like the NPS and other KPIs? Uh, and obviously, this is a big, big syllabus, sorry, big element of the ACCA syllabus. And then more specific points on these issues are discussing strategies on how to improve driver satisfaction, independent contractor satisfaction. Are we going to increase their compensation? We already offer flexible working hours. Is there anything else we could do? Or perhaps better support systems, these things we looked at in Portus 5 Forces, or really just emphasize the importance of excellent customer services in order to retain and attract users. And also, they already employ continuous feedback loops when drivers and customers are rated after the drop-offs. And also, how do we use real-time data analysis to maintain high satisfaction levels gain we talked about this in SWOT and we looked at leveraging technological strengths for customer and driver engagement. So there we go. There's our top 10 issues and there's our video focus on the ACCA SBL. Really analyzing the pre-scene and then applying all the key models, the key theories and then demonstrating to you what we think is most likely to come up in your exam. Now, to accompany these three videos, 
We also produce an industry analysis. Now, this is a large document that's going to explain to you everything you need to know about the industry. And alongside that, we've also prepared two mock exams to make sure that you can practice using your newfound knowledge before you come to the exam. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you found it really useful. If you want to prepare even more, and why wouldn't you, head over to astranti.com. Over there, we offer a comprehensive suite of resources, starting with a free industry analysis and a detailed pre-scene analysis where we break down the case study for you. We also provide a strategic analysis using relevant models and a top 10 issues analysis to highlight the most likely challenges you're going to face in the exam. And to help you revise, to help you practice, we offer two pre-scene based mock exams plus an exam technique mini course, as well as our live and recorded masterclasses to make sure you are fully prepared for your exams. Thank you so much.